I would like to welcome everyone in this uh, topics under the basic concepts of computer units. So let me continue with the, our previous video wherein I have discussed the elements of the computer system. So let's continue with the components of the computer system. So let me share to you the presentation. So this uh, topic will cover the components of the computer system. So this will also uh, tackle the accessories and the parts of the hardware or of the computer system. So what about the components of a computer system? A computer system mainly has three components. We have the input unit, the central processing unit, and the output unit. These components are the building blocks of computer and define its structure. Let's move on. So under the input unit, so input unit is responsible for controlling the various input devices that are used to enter data into the computer. So this unit are responsible of the keyboard, the mouse, the joysticks, the microphone, the barcode reader, the camera, touchpad, touch screen, the reader, and so on. Uh, commonly used input devices are, yes, of course, the mouse, the keyboard, the light pad, and so on. So they are the devices which allows us to enter data to the computer for processing. And they are under the input unit of a computer system. So still under the input unit, we have uh, some uh, devices uh, which are designed for special purposes such as uh, optical character recognition. So as uh, time passed by, we are getting more and more high-end or high-tech. So we don't just uh, use the keyboard or the mouse to input data, but we actually have this, what we call optical re character recognition that when you put your fingerprint on that uh, scanner, it, the computer will automatically, or the machine will automatically read it. Or if you just uh, say something, it will be captured by the machine or by the device, then automatically you will be allowed to access that particular uh, uh, account or device. So also we have magnetic ink character recognition uh, and barcode reader and the like. So there, there are uh, other devices that accept input by responding to physical touch and voice such as uh, ATMs. So we interact with the machine or in performing our transactions such as uh, withdrawals or uh, deposits. No? We just merely interact with the machine and the machine can uh, respond uh, directly through this uh, input uh, uh, hardwares that are part of the system of the computer. So under component is the what we call central processing unit. So the central processing unit ensures the flow of data into the system by directing the data to enter the system, storing it into the memory, and retrieving it when needed to produce the output. So these are uh, concrete examples of the central processing unit. If you can see here, if you are to open the motherboard or that what we call bags or that what we call central processing unit of our system, it is uh, where you can see the CPU okay, uh, device, which does the processing every time we input or enter data to the computer. So this unit uh, do those processing tasks for us to be able to uh, produce meaningful results using the computer. So still under the uh, central processing unit, we have uh, the types of the what we call unit or CPU. We have first is arithmetic and logic unit. It performs all the arithmetical calculations and computations like addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. So it is also responsible for logical calculations like comparisons among data items. So particularly this uh, ALU 
uh, does no the computation uh, such as no the following operations or addition subtraction so if there is this uh, computation that we do like suppose we are using microsoft excel to do the computation so it's it's the arithmetic and logic unit that does that uh, task so another is the what we call memory unit so under the central processing uh, unit, we have this what we call memory unit. It's where you can see in that motherboard the this type of uh, memory card where store where data are stored or what we call the data has to be stored in the memory blocks of the computer before it is it is retrieved for actual processing. That's why uh, we make use of the computer system in uh, storing our data our files no so all we, do, we have to do is to just make file uh, create files or documents whatever types of file that you do in the computer uh, we uh, usually save it there then later we retrieve it and so on so it's the memory unit that does the task for you to be able to again access your file for in the future so when speaking of memory, we have these two types of memory. Uh, first, we have this one called primary memory or the what we call random access memory or RAM. So RAM is uh, volatile data lost if computer switch off. Or this uh, type of memory is the what we call short-term storage of data. So suppose uh, gumawa kayo ng file or nag-type ka ng document mo, of course, using the Microsoft Word application, so while you are not uh, uh, yet uh, saving the file, while you are still working on the file, finishing it, so it's the it's the the RAM, uh, it's the primary memory that does the the storing of the task or of the unsaved task. Mag automatically sinisave yan siya ni primary memory or ni RAM habang hindi mo pa sinisave yung file because you are still working on it. Okay. But once you save the file, it will automatically be saved in the secondary memory. So secondary memory, uh, kapag sinave mo na yung file sa computer, that will automatically be saved in the what we call secondary memory, which we call read-only memory. Okay? So pwede din siya isave sa uh, flash drive, sa CD, sa DVD, and so on. So this type of memory is the what we call non-volatile data remains when computer is switched off. So kahit naka-off na yung computer, so the memory or the data is still there, is still uh, uh, available, can still be accessed okay, in the future. So it is also called as long-term or permanent storage of data. So unless i-delete mo yung file na ginawa mo or sinave mo in that particular storage, mapa USB man yan or mapa uh, flash drive man yan, mapa CD man yan or mapa... Uh, memory man yan sa computer. Okay, so kapag uh, hindi mo siya dinilit, it will stay permanent, no? Unless the device is damaged, something like that. But uh, of course, the RAM, kapag enough mo na yung computer, hindi na save yung file na, na ginawa mo. So, yan yung tinatawag yung tinga RAM. Because temporary lang siya. So, unless you save the file, so kapag sinave yun na, magiging uh, secondary memory na yan siya. So those are the two types of memory. Let's move on to the control unit. So control unit controls and coordinates the activities of all the components of the computer system. It treats data from the memory, decodes the instructions, looks after its execution, and fetches the next instruction and so on. So that's about the control unit. So let's move on to the output unit of the computer system so you see output unit the task is con it controls the various output devices like the printer the graphic plotter speech synthesizer monitor or also known as visual display unit or vdu to produce the desired output and present it to the user so it's the output unit that does the task through the use of uh, or through the input device, the output devices such as the printer, the, the monitor, the screen, the speaker, the headset, and so on that produces a result or that displays results. 
It ensures the convertibility of output into human readable form that is understandable by the user. So uh, what is understandable by the user? So if you can see it in the monitor, the, the display of the data or information that where you are, which you are working on. So that's it. It is displayed by the output unit. And uh, if you are able to print the, the data or the, the file that you have created, so if it is already understandable, meaningful, that is already the output information. And of course, that is made possible by the output unit. So it controls the output devices for us to, to get the what we call results or the, the meaningful information we expect from the computer system. Okay, so let's now move on to the parts and accessories of computers. So I'll be showing you a video that will describe to you all about the accessories and parts of the computer. Okay, so I hope you've learned from that video and uh, it uh, comprehensively explained the, the parts of the computer somehow. So let's move on to the classifications of the computers. So actually, uh, we are to uh, learn how the computer evolved from uh, mechanical uh, part or era up to the present. So let's move on with the analog computer. So the first uh, computer is the what we call analog computer. An analog computer, spelled analog in British English, is a form of computer that uses continuous physical phenomena such as electrical, mechanical, or hydraulic quantities to model the problem being solved. So here, are the examples of the analog computers. Next in line is the digital computer. A computer that performs calculations and logical operations with quantities represented as digits, usually in the binary number system. So here are examples of the digital computers. Another classification of computer is hybrid computer or it's the combination of the analog and the digital computer so a combination of computers those are capable of inputting and outputting in both digital and analog signals a hybrid computer system set up offers a cost effective method of performing complex simulations so here are examples of the hybrid computer 
Okay, so let's now move on to the types of computer. It's the what the uh, it's what I'm talking earlier that we are to uh, see how the computer evolved from this size to the present size. So let's move on. It's on the basis of size. Okay, so first in line is the what we call supercomputer. So supercomputer is the fastest and most powerful type of computer. They are very expensive and are employed for specialized applications that require immense amounts of mathematical calculations. So examples of computers that are using this type of computer are examples of, uh, uh, was this a uh, task that are using this type of computer uh, are the what we call weather forecasting, animated graphics, fluid dynamic calculations, nuclear energy research, and petroleum exploration. So here are examples, or this is how the supercomputers look like. Let's move on. So next in line is the what we call mainframe computers. So mainframe computer is a very large and expensive computer capable of supporting hundreds or even thousands of users simultaneously so although uh, many users are there working at the same time still that mainframe computer can perform its work without any interruptions or that the speed is uh, consistent in some ways mainframes are more powerful than supercomputers because they support more simultaneous programs so supercomputers although it is very powerful but if there are already many users working simultaneously, it is uh, ito ng mainframe computer. So, but supercomputers can execute a single program faster than a mainframe. So, only that the supercomputer is faster over the mainframe computer. Next in line is the mini computer. So, it is mini because it is a mid sized computer. In size and power, mini computers lie between workstations and mainframes. So somehow it is a combination maybe of the uh, mini computer and the mainframe. That's why the, the size looks like this and it looks like this. Okay. So, but in general, a mini computer is a multi-processing system capable of supporting from four to about 200 users simultaneously. So that's about the mini computer. Let's move on. So after the mini computer, we have the micro computer or the personal computer. So this is the commonly used computer to me because I've been using this computer since uh, I've uh, taught no, the, the computer subjects. So we have uh, this uh, classifications of this what we call micro computer or personal computer. We have desktop computer. So why desktop? Because it is uh, uh, put at the top of the desk. You can work on it at the top of the desk. So it is a personal or microcomputer sufficient to fit on a desk. Next, next is the palm top computer. So palm top computer or the what you call digital diary or notebook computer or the personal digital assistant is a hand-sized computer. Palm tops have no keyboard but the screen serves both as an input and output device so this is how the palm top computer looks like so, parang cell phone na lang natin you can work on it no using just the mere phone because you, every time you you type you also use the screen of the phone to work on the device something like that but since it is computer so it looks like this so the very familiar okay is the what we call laptop computer Laptop computer is a portable computer complete with an integrated screen and keyboard. It is generally smaller in size than a desktop computer and larger than a notebook computer. So again, it's just like a desktop computer, but only that the laptop is a mobile computer. It is, uh, of course, mas magaan kumpara sa desktop. You can um, bring it anywhere. You can uh, work on it at the top of your lap. That's why we call it laptop computer. And of course, we have this what we call workstations computer. So I just uh, would like to believe that you are familiar with this uh, 
types of computer because if you are to uh, go to the uh, computer cafe, uh, you are maybe you have already experienced this uh, type of uh, computers. So workstations is a terminal or desktop computer in a network. In this context, workstation is just a generic term for a user's machine, client machine, in contrast to a server or mainframe. Okay, so those are the content of this uh, lesson. I hope you've learned from the things that we have discussed in this video. And uh, I want you to just stand by for the next topic. Okay, and uh, I want you to keep engaged in this lessons of ours that are in the basic concepts of computer. So thank you. See you in the next video.